constantly engaged in the act of perception, right? And we recognize that perception and sensation from the first lecture is a little different. I didn't want to spend too much time on it now. I think I have to see what other authors are going to describe. I do remember from my own training that uh, a few authors really went into a methodological sort of deconstruction on the difference between perception and sensation. But roughly speaking, sensation is more passive, um, perception is more active. That's sort of a gross way of describing it. Sensation is the mere reception of information via the physical body. Perception is both the reception of sense data, information, and the articulation of meaning, right? We are, there's, a, there's an additional factor in perceiving. I recognize, and I talked about this yesterday, right? I recognize um, the meaningfulness of some external stimulus. Okay. Now, the perceiver is attempting to make sense of something to be able to acquire K. In a bit. The perceiver is attempting to arrive at knowledge, right? The perceiver is attempting, and this is the bottom of page two, the perceiver is attempting to arrive at knowledge. And knowledge of what? Knowledge of the external world. I'm going to come to know the external world. And the question that we have to ask ourselves is, well, how do we come about knowing the external world? We do it, as I just said, right, through sensation and perception. I use my physical body. I, I use my mind. My mind is conditioned if you're, if you're becoming properly chain, trained or you are already expertly trained. I use my mind to utilize my body to make sense of my world, right? And I don't mean mind in an immaterial sense. I mean mind is biological. Okay. The problem, however, in attempting to arrive at a knowledge of the external world is the fact that I can misperceive. Misperception becomes a problem. It becomes a huge problem. This is a very easy, easy example, right? You go out to the pub, you go out to the bar, you drink a little bit too much beer, um, you, you stumble out of the bar, your, your senses are a little riled up, you think you see the curb, and you, uh, you see this all the time, this is the greatest thing about drunk people, right? <laughs> it's like, they'll take that super high step, <laughs> because they're misperceiving, like, wow, that was an awkward step, right? They perceive, because of sort of um, false perception, they think the step, or they think that the, the curb is much higher than it actually is. So they step in such a manner, and then, you know, sort of forcefully downplant, it's, it's hilarious to watch. Um, the idea is, the reason why they misperceive was a result, obviously, of their intoxication. You're driving in a car, I live in the state of Florida, it gets ridiculously hot. It's not necessarily dry, but it gets ridiculously hot. And then now and then, you'll be driving in your car and you see sort of the haze rising from the street. Right? There, we don't need to give examples of misperception, but there is a means of misperception. Usually misperception is indirect, and I don't want to get into this yet because this really has nothing to do with it. Well, it doesn't really matter, but I'm not going to get into it yet. You guys know I sort of freestyle the lectures. It's, it's more than just what the author wrote. It's profoundly more than just what the author wrote. But the idea is, in perception, you can have sort of an, uh, a misperception that is based on indirect consequences from some type of intoxicant. So that I don't really want to mis misperceive the world. I want to perceive the world in its proper sense, but I drink too much beer and I misperceive the world. There are people who deliberately want to misperceive the world, right? Um, if, and I'm not going to get into this at all, but um, at a very, very conceptually complex level, I don't think people do it for this reason, but the idea, and Google it, lucid dreaming, L-U-C-I-D dreaming, is the attempt to, f to program your body to misperceive the world as sort of an exercise in mental... Uh, mental destabilization, right? I know that this isn't real. Um, I know that I'm in a dream state, but I'm aware, right? It's this very bizarre sort of intermediary between being fully cognizant and being in a, literally, not in the matrix, like literally in a dream state. Lucid dreaming is a bit of both, right? It's a bit, it's, it preserves um, a bit of your real cognizant perceptive abilities and sort of the um, the oneric aspects, the onery aspects of, of the dream state, right? Um, so we recognize, obviously, that misperception is going to, 
is going to have us question, right? This is going to influence and have us question our knowledge. If I recognize that, if I take a hallucinogen, I can misperceive the world. You take DMT, you take LSD, you take, uh, you take whatever it is that you take, you recognize that these drugs have a neurological, pharmacological effect on your brain state and it causes you to misperceive the external world. Well, there's, there's doubt then that has been raised, right? And I've already done a sort of a methodological deconstruction of Descartes' um, uh, skepticism, and you can watch that video. Just type in Descartes in my search box and watch my series on, on and I might need to put a link in here on that because I'm not going to go through that in more detail. I've already discussed that uh, at length. But it's obvious that you can arrive at doubt. The question then becomes, well, since I recognize that misperception can cause me to doubt, to question my knowledge of the external world, the question becomes one of reliability. R-E-O-I-A-B-I-L-I-T. The question becomes one of reliability. How reliable is my knowledge of the external world? So, a very sort of introductory, infantile means, epistemological, now I'm going to take the example that I gave you before and advance it a bit, right? Now the ghetto philosophy is becoming more philosophy. A rudimentary, a basic way of asking the question is, what is the nature of the external world? It's a very sort of infantile way. Um, it's not necessarily philosophically complex way of asking an epistemological question. It's a good start. So, what is the nature of the external world? How can I know the external world? Very basic. A more advanced question is, how can I know that my understanding of the external world is reliable? Same essential question, just a far more advanced articulation of the question. How can I know, how can I verify, that, and that will be important later, how can I verify that my understanding what I've already acquired, of the external world, what exists, is reliable. Now, that I have to sort of visualize so that you get sort of the profound recognition of the distinction in the question, right? A sort of basic level question is, um, what is the nature of the external world? How can I come to know the external world? Very sort of rudimentary description. A far more complex far more detailed understanding of our discussion is the attempt to ask, how can I understand, like how can I understand the nature of the external world, but also how can I understand that my understanding is reliable, right? So here's the perceiver, here's the external world, I recognize that I can question this state of affairs because of misperception and other things. Um, I have a particular belief of this nature, right? I've acquired this belief of the nature of the external world, and I want to know about the relationship between these things, right? And that's what I've drawn at the bottom, right? I want to know about the nature of the relationship between these things. My understanding and that which actually exists. This is going to be the grounds for a decades, not decades long, centuries long, centuries long epistemological debate, right? Centuries long epistemological debate is going to rest on, and this is super important for you to have a really basic but solid understanding of epistemology, is that centuries long debate, and it'll change, and it'll transform, but it, uh, in almost any of its instantiations, it's going to rest on the question of, how do I legitimize, verify, recognize that which I've already acquired, my beliefs, my understanding, and that which actually is? You can immediately then say that we can take it another level. Now we're going to get really complex, and hopefully I've gradually um, transitioned you. I mean, this is the first sort of real... Uh, the last installment was sort of introductory stuff, now we're starting to get serious about it. The question then becomes, and, and this is, I hope um, this will make sense, I want to go slow. The question then becomes, and I'll actually draw it, just to make it simple now, you for understanding, right, my understanding, and E for existence, 